Albin Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the pink symbol ABN AF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at talkdigitalnetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is market historian Bob Hoy. He's the chief investment strategist for institutionaladvisors.com. Welcome back to the show, Bob. Yeah, hi, Jim. Always good to be with you. Your impression of Donald Trump in Davos? Yes, uh, he didn't go last year. Of course, we all know that it's a big confab of wealthy people wealthy big businessmen and big government and they all love big government they all love to invent problems and then solve them at the expense of the people so uh, to have trump there this time is it might have been terribly offensive to some people but generally what he said was that the reform going on in the u.s is good it's reducing rules and regulations it's reducing the rates of taxation on business and on individuals, and it is firming up the economy. And that with the U.S. having a good, strong economy, it'll be good for the rest of the world. Now, generally, that, that's true, and it is happening. And uh, so it's good to see some just straight-up common sense coming out from a major political figure. And the other irony was that uh, there is always a faction in there that are, want to control people through uh, controlling the weather and the climate, and they've got this notion that they can dial in the perfect temperature for the earth. Well, unusual cold and terrific amounts of snowfall uh, going into the meeting. So I, I enjoy that irony as well. Yes, Bob, we've said several times the day you can control the Earth's orbit, asteroid hits, volcanic eruptions, sunspots. Yes, you too can control climate. Oh, sure. Let's just pass a law <laughs> saying that this uh, cooling sun or the, you know, diminishment in solar activity, uh, let, let's just pass a law saying, no, it's not allowed. We want it to go back to being warm because then we got something that we can get excited about. So. Oh, it is fake. I mean, when you get a political movement out to create perfection, uh, man, you're in trouble. And, of course, one can look back on what the communists did for 70-plus years where they were out to create, as Marx said, the perfect man. Um, they only murdered 100 million people trying to do it, and then they sort of ran out of energy and... I think communism, of course, is still very popular in high circles, but uh, in academic circles, but uh, not with the rest of the people. And so, anyways, but you know, the uh, the markets remain very strong. Um, the uh, senior indexes, the Dow and the S and P and the Nasdaq, making new highs, and uh, with. Uh, at the moment, justification. I look at it as, you know, as a technician, the extension of a trend, and there are, uh, there is a, a technique for that it's called the ADX, and it is up to the highest on the Dow Jones, on the Dow Jones history of 115 years. This ADX, we've been able to run it throughout the whole history. Uh, so that's it. Then the other one that's uh, being accomplished is if you go back to the crash that ended in 09, there's been some big swings since then. And they're fitting into uh, some Fibonacci ratio numbers. And they these Fibonacci's appear in nature and various things, and they also appear in the financial markets. 
So you have uh, the, this ADX at its greatest extension, and you have a Fibonacci move that is approaching uh, the ratio that uh, has been governing some of the big swings since the low in 2009. So the, uh, this, these two things are, are saying that we are an extraordinary market. But you have on the corporate side, the urge to buy has to be justified. So the, corp the, the stock analysts then come up with uh, terrific earnings estimates for, you know, leading companies or leading sectors. And with the uh, change in taxes and reduction in rules and regulations, that is a positive. But somewhere you've got to say uh, how, you know, how extensive is this and how much longer can it go on? Well, we had an idea back in, uh, in November. Our uh, our um, indicator gave a, what we call a springboard buy. That's set up to kind of identify nice trading lows in a flat to long-term rising trend, and it did there. And so then you figure, okay, November, December, we're likely to see lows, and then... Uh, with the industrial commodities, base metals and, and uh, crude oil. Well, crude oil never really did have much of a low, but you had a low for copper there in, at the end of November. So these would move up, and you've got pretty good seasonal tendencies in, in base metals, for example. So uh, one would be out to around March. So then I thought, okay, if you've got favorable trends in industrial commodities, you're going to have a favorable trend in credit spreads, and both would be supportive to the stock market, no matter how expensive it is. So this is just looking at the month, and the uh, that is carrying us out to March, and when we get to March, we'll see what's happening. But in the meantime, while this is a wonderful party, uh, one should be aware of trap doors and things like that. And, uh, in this case, we would, we watch the industrial commodities. Uh, if they make it out to March, that's great. But if they falter, then that would be a warning. And the credit spreads and the yield curve, if they, both of those continue favorable, uh, fine, terrific. But if they change, then that would suggest a change in in the ability of speculators to keep keep the markets going so it, it's a fascinating market Jim and I'm I'm thankful that that we have so much financial history as well as technical tools that have been more or less reliable so uh, and that my uh, my old historian side here, looks at the excesses and said, says, incredible. I mean, uh, and how long can it go? All those sort of questions. But anyways, uh, we'll just play it out to March and see how it goes. We'll have more with Bob Hoy right after the break. I'm Brian Fowler, president of Blind Creek Resources Limited, listed on the TSX Venture Exchange, ticker symbol BCK. Blind Creek is focused in the Yukon, Northwest Territories, and British Columbia. The company's key property is the Blend Project, one of the largest undeveloped lead-zinc silver deposits in Western Canada, plus plans to advance the recently acquired, fully permitted, historic engineer gold mine in the Atlant District of Northwestern BC. Check us out at blindcreekresources.com. I'm Greg Johnston, CEO of Carl Data Solutions, an industrial Internet of Things company that provides big data solutions for monitoring critical infrastructure. Carl Data offers machine learning and predictive analytics features through our cloud-based applications to deliver key asset-saving operational insights from massive amounts of data. Carl Data trades on the CSE symbol CRL and the pink symbol CDTAF. For more details on Carl Data, please visit carlsolutions.com. Welcome back. We're chatting with Bob Hoy, 
Bob, what's the U.S. official policy on the value of their dollar? <laughs> that's, Jim, that's a good question. Because you had Nunchen, uh, uh earlier in the week uh, talking about a policy of a weaker dollar. And then you got Trump uh, going into Davos saying that with the strong economy and the reform that's going on, the U.S. dollar should be firmer. And uh, then, of course, it, it, unfortunately, then Trump then sort of said, well, maybe Nunchen wasn't speaking uh, uh, straight up or something like that. Anyways, the dollar index, uh, we have thought that a number of levels, like at 92 or 91, would hold. And no, it didn't. This this then became a, a, a fairly serious decline in the U.S. dollar. And it is now, a couple of weeks ago, we thought that then the the uh, RSI, the momentum on it, was at 31. And we thought, well, maybe maybe an RSI of below 29 would... Uh, would be low enough to kind of slow the decline down. Well, it's got down to 27. And also, it's giving a, uh, the market is action, is, is, uh, registering a downside exhaustion. So, let's put it this way. Getting oversold, uh, with momentum and other calculations, and then if you want to look back to when there was a similarly strong decline in the U.S. dollar index, the DX, that was in 2008. So let's look at what was going on in 2008. One, the stock market had peaked in October 2007 and took a fairly good hit into the first of the year and then rallied up until May. Then also that was when the peak oil story was the big fascination and crude oil was rallying up to $147 and because the peak oil story said the oil was going to disappear, there everybody's going to run out of oil. But the, oh, actually we should review the technicals on that. That one was giving a great upside exhaustion readings on the crude oil and it was gave a weekly and on that one concluded that a cyclical bear market for crude would follow and noted that if it if the uh, upside exhaustion included also the monthly reading then it would be a secular bear market well the monthly reading did come in by that july and uh the rest is history. So you now have this uh, the similarities, Jim, are that intense speculation in the stock market and pretty good speculation in in uh, metal prices or in uh, industrial commodities. Uh, speculation back on again in house prices and real estate. So it is the condition whereby. Fabulous speculation against a weakening U.S. dollar, and both are getting overdone. And we should take a long-distance view on this. Maybe, maybe the overdone can run right through March. Who knows? And we won't know until you see a change in industrial commodities and a change in the credit market. So at the moment, it's it looks like clear sailing. We'll have more with Bob Hoy right after this. MGX Minerals is revolutionizing the new energy economy with patented lithium extraction technology, replacing traditional solar evaporation using low-cost, low-energy nanofiltration. The first system of this paradigm shift technology is currently being commissioned. MGX Minerals trades on the CSE, symbol XMG, the OTCQB, symbol MGXMF, and Frankfurt, symbol 1MG. For more information, visit our website, mgxminerals.com. Keep informed. Receive our weekly recap of thought-provoking articles, podcasts, and radio delivered to your inbox for free. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage, HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're chatting with Bob Hoy. 
Bob, usually if you want to control the value of your currency, well, just boost interest rates and see what happens to your currency. It usually boosts it, doesn't it? Yeah, when, yeah, that's looking at it, Jim, on the policy side. Uh, there's the market side, and uh, I think it's easier just to say, hey, it's getting exceptionally oversold as the party's getting actually overbought, so it's it's getting set up for for a change. Um, and when the whole of the world is short the U.S. dollar and it goes up, it's very inconvenient to a whole lot of positions. And uh, they, uh, but you have had a weak senior currency going into great financial bubbles in the past. And then once the uh, speculation is over, then the senior currency, which is now the dollar, it used to be sterling, and then the it becomes chronically strong. That's against most other currencies and most other and most commodities for most of the time uh interrupted by business uh cycle you know the 3 to 4 year business cycle but at any rate the, the this old rule has come in uh, a weaker senior currency in a financial mania and then when the mania is over the uh, senior currency re- could become relentlessly strong and this way this works jim is in in the party, everybody is reaching for yield in debt instruments, and they the buyers are there. And then, of course, you get weaker credits, like you know, two bit countries and two bit uh, companies are borrowing money like crazy with no ability to pay it back. So then, what you have is that when the market changes then the problem becomes getting here and most of the debt is due and payable in New York in US dollars so the uh, those who are stuck holding the bag and, and with too much debt they have to get their hands on US dollars to service that debt in New York and so then the issuance of debt Due and payable in U.S. dollars really is a huge short position. So you can see how on following previous financial manias where the senior currency has become firm. So uh, any any people who are overly borrowed now uh, should be looking, because uh, there's good asset prices now, on uh, reducing exposure and reducing debt. Uh, so, but as I say, uh, the party can continue <laughs> perhaps into March. Bob, thank you so much for chatting with us. Well, Jim, I enjoy it and look forward to next week. My guest has been market historian Bob Hoy. He's the chief investment strategist for institutionaladvisors.com. If you have any questions for Bob or the show, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.